South Florida elections are underway. Races that will chart the course of South Florida's future. Early voting in the city elections may not draw a big voter turnout, but the results are critical for the future of city services like police and fire, water and sewer, planning and zoning, and of course climate change. These elections also are the first time since the legislature tightened rules on mail-in ballots. So we begin this hour with the race that is still a year away, but does seem much closer. State Senator Annette Tadeo of Miami-Dade launched a campaign for Florida governor this week. Democrats now have three candidates to consider to have won statewide races. Ag Commissioner Nikki Freed and Congressman Charlie Crist, who previously was Florida's first go or governor, although he was a Republican at the time. Now add to the list of candidates, State Senator Annette Tadeo, a business owner, a mother, and right now the only Spanish speaker in the race. And she is live with us via Zoom. Good morning. May we call you Annette? <laughs> Please. Okay, please good do. morning, Annette, and great to have you here. Glad. And um, I guess the first question on everyone's mind is you've been thinking about it and telegraphing a possibility, a run yeah. for governor. So, what was it that tripped the decision? Well, first of all, I did. I, I traveled all over the state asking people what they thought we should do and if I should run. And actually, the calls got bigger and bigger and more uh, often as we. Uh, more time went by, but ultimately, at the end of the day, first and foremost, I'm a mom with a kid in public school, and I can tell you that we have a governor that is not worried about the well-being of Floridians, let alone when he crossed the line with our kids, and that was it. I couldn't stand in the sidelines anymore and not fight for our state to have someone that actually will represent all Floridians, not just those voters in Iowa that he seems so worried about our current governor. Yeah, and that obviously before you can get to Ron DeSantis, you have to beat Nikki Freed or Charlie Crist to win the nomination. They are, you know, they have established campaigns. They've been out on the campaign trail for months. They have raised a lot of money. In August, Charlie Crist raised $545,000. Uh, what is it about their campaigns that you think hasn't succeeded hasn't succeeded, and why will yours? Well, first of all, let's remember that in 2018, both candidates who ended up being the nominees were not the ones that everybody said were going to be or weren't the favorite, and nobody thought they would be, both on the Republican side with Ron DeSantis and on the Democratic side with Andrew Gillum. So if we choose uh, to say that underdogs don't have a chance, we choose to ignore history. But with regards to my opponents in the primary, look, obviously, I have great respect for Charlie, and I know he has a huge heart. Uh, but this race is not about Charlie. It is not about Nikki, or is it is not about me. It's about the future of our party as Democrats and the future of Florida. And who can bring the coalition of voters that is going to be necessary for us to win Obviously, part of that coalition is going to include Hispanic voters, where Democrats lately have been doing not so well. And I am glad that I am somebody that has actually been able to fight back on the attacks that they throw at, at Democrats and been able to be successful creating that coalition and we will do it across the state. The okay, so so that was a little bit of an understatement, especially in Miami-Dade, because Hispanics in Miami-Dade creamed the Democrats, I think is probably a better or more apt description in the last elections. And so you hit upon a very interesting angle. So kind of let's go with that right now. Um, it, it is for voters. It is about you and Charlie Crist and Nikki Freed at the moment because Democratic voters have to pick between you. So as the Hispanic in the race, talk a little bit about the socialism tag that was so successful for the GOP and, and campaigning in South Florida, how it really stuck, how you are going to be combating that kind of label for, for a party, many of which in the party has policies that can be tagged with a socialist kind of mantle factually speaking for many people. How are you gonna how are you gonna combat that? Well, first of all, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that uh, there are many voters right now 
uh, who would never send back their social security check. And that to some people, I guess, would be considered socialism. But let me say what I've done and why I know that I would be the best candidate, uh, not just in the primary, but in the general to beat Ron DeSantis. And that is because they tried that on me. They tried, they didn't just call me a socialist and a comunista, they also called me a terrorist sympathizer. And we didn't take it in the chin. We did not respond because it's ridiculous. We actually responded head on with my personal story and how my father was kidnapped by the FARC terrorist group in Colombia. I had to come to Alabama of all places to live by myself because we had to flee. And these are the experiences, not just of me, but of so many Hispanics right here in South Florida, but yes, they have been successful in taking them away from voting for us. But we need to bring them back and not scare them, but at the same time, be proud of being Democrats and all the things we stand for. I have been a lifelong Democrat, have fought for our values and do not diverge from them. And that is what we need. Yeah. Uh, Annette, obviously you were born in Colombia. Your father was an American, a pilot. As you say, he was captured. But, you know, when we talk about being able to appeal to voters, Hispanic voters in Spanish, speak their language, uh, you're not saying, gee, they're just going to vote for me because I'm appealing to them in Spanish. They want to hear your ideas about the economy and about health care and all the other issues that are really before the state. Absolutely. And I don't think anyone should vote for someone simply because they're a woman or simply because they're a mom or simply because they're a small business owner or simply because I speak Spanish. But clearly, we need to talk about our experiences and what we stand for. And that's what I do. And that's what I've done winning in a current Trump district and being very popular in it because I represent all people, not just those that vote for us. And that is not what we currently have. And I will tell you, I do have big differences. To this day, I still meet a payroll every two weeks with my small business. And I know how tough these times have been for business owners, for us to make it through COVID. I know how tough it has been for us as parents to worry about our kids and their education and to have to fight a, a governor who's threatening to take people from their, from their position that they were duly elected. Um, this is the kind of thing, taking defunding schools, taking money away from county, counties just simply because they are not doing what he says. He's not the emperor. This is what Maduro in Venezuela does. And we need someone that's actually going to work for all Floridians. So that's how we're going to win this race, talking about the issues and pushing back. But it's actually the current governor who is behaving like, you know, like a dictator. Okay, so let me, um, because he's not here, I will just say the, co the current governor does have his support. Uh, the legislature is a GOP-run legislature right now. And to get there to that race, there's three people right now. And if you look at the policies and perspectives and platforms, you and Charlie and Nikki and Annette have, um, we're, we're all well familiar with all of you and first name basis and familiar with your positions and there's not a lot of daylight there at all you're very simpatico uh, as candidates mm -hmm. so how uh, we talked a little bit about your heritage and the and the spanish speaking abilities and besides that policy wise how do you differentiate yourself between these other two candidates well, you know, I think I, I have been in the legislature fighting the fight and, and on our values and don't divulge from them. I mean, I don't get away from them. And one of those is expanding Medicaid. Look, uh, people uh, watching us need to know that we, the only reason we haven't expanded Medicaid is because we have a governor that's not willing to. I know we have the votes in the legislature, even though it's Republican held. And I will tell you, for those of you listening and saying, I have insurance, it doesn't matter to me. Yes, it does. There's a hidden tax of $2,000 in your uh, health care every time you go to the hospital. But that people don't know this. And it's really important for us to understand that we're all paying for politics because they're playing politics with people's lives. And this $2,000 doesn't come from Annette Tadeo. Right. It comes from the Chamber of Commerce study 
And there are many other issues that are going to separate us. All right. We're, such we're, as we're, we're, uh, and excuse me, we're going to get to a lot of other issues with you in just a minute. Please don't go away, everybody. We'll be back with Annette today. Welcome back on This Week in South Florida. We are speaking with Annette Tadeo, state senator, candidate for governor. Um, Annette, I have to say, I didn't really hear an answer to Glenna's question. What sets you apart from Nikki Freed uh, and, and um, you know, any other candidate who is running, Charlie Crist, any candidate? What, what issue sets you apart? Well, first of all, I am a lifelong Democrat and have been fighting the good fight for Democrats and our values. All right. Can I just for, jump in? Can, I'm sorry. Can I just jump in and say in 2014, you ran as Charlie Chris running mate. You didn't yes. raise questions then about his bona fides as a Democrat. Now you are. No, I am. This is not about Charlie. This is about me. You asked me about me right. and I'm telling you that I have been fighting at these values. And I know, let me tell you, going all across the state, talking to people, receiving the phone calls, what they wanted was a fighter, somebody who has been there in the fight and doesn't give up. And someone that can create the coalition that we're going to need to win. Look, we've tried everything else and we have come short every single time. And I was right there in 2014 when we tried. Uh, but the fact is, we definitely have a deficit in South Florida and we know it. And we need to get those voters back because DeSantis, uh, you know, is going to get those voters if we don't fight with all our might to get them back. I will tell you, we do have. Al Demings running for Senate, and I know that a Demings today or ticket would be exactly what we need to create the coalition of voters that we need to win. And also, just really talking about all the experiences, not just in the legislature fighting for the things that we value, but also just personal experiences as a business owner, as a, as a mom with a kid in public school. These are all major differences that are going to bring people to us to vote and to win, not just in the primary, but in the general. Let, let me ask you about uh, just in the past couple of weeks, you know, bills are being filed for this session. You filed a, a slew of them, redistricting related, um, wages and benefits related, Medicaid expansion you were just talking about related. You know, Florida is at the moment is a red state, traditionally purple, but right now is a red state. Do you have any hope that any of these bills will have any traction? And as as you run and sound very excited about the possibility for Democrats, and I know excitement is a hugely important component of a campaign, the, the reality on the ground right now is that the Republicans are in control. Look, the Republicans are in control, and that's actually part of the reason why we need to ensure we win. This is not just for Democrats. This is for all Floridians, because we need balance. It's been way too long of no balance, no back and forth, no, like I just said, passing Medicaid expansion, which the votes are there, no leadership. And you may ask yourself, well, how are you going to do that? when it's going to continue being a Republican House and a Republican Senate, well, you have the veto pen. And you also have to have respect across the aisle, which I do, highly respected across the aisle. I actually get bills passed, but not just that. I actually work with them to try to accomplish yeah. things for the betterment of Floridians. Right. And that's uh, the kind of governor we're going to need. Yeah, Annette, if you can, in about 15 seconds or so, during the legislative session, which begins in January, you can't raise money for your campaign. How are you going to get around that? Look, we have a plan uh, to make sure that we raise resources before then and after then. And I will tell you that for sure, money is not everything, but we will have the necessary resources for people to know that we are on the ticket and that they have an option of someone that will actually create the coalition necessary for us to win in November. Annette Tadeo, the most recent entry into Florida governor's race. Great to have you, and we Thank will you. see you on the campaign trail. See Thank you out you. there.